With us now today in St. Louis at 6 a.m. starts right now. Mason was um, just a great guy. This morning, two Gascadet County communities are waking up heartbroken after two officers were shot at a gas station. How they're now mourning the loss of Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith, plus an update in the investigation. Plus, a ball and standoff ends in the death of a woman who barricaded herself in a home for several hours. What we're learning about the suspect accused of firing multiple shots at police and how the community is still rattled this morning. Deadline to respond. St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner is running out of time to respond to allegations made against her by the Missouri Attorney General. We'll break down the timeline and what happens if she doesn't file the plea. And dry for now, but warmer temperatures tomorrow and for Thursday, and then rain develops Thursday evening. We'll talk about the timeline and a chilly end to the week. A day of deals. The different businesses celebrating St. Louis on 314 Day, including massive savings on Cardinals games. And Mr. STL himself is making headlines this morning where you can catch Nelly's latest concert in the Show Me State. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. A live look now at Lambert Airport, nice and quiet. The roads out front moving along just fine too, but I think most people want to stay in the loo today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 314 day. It's all about St. Louis, right? <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March the 14th. I'm Rennie Knott. And I'm Michelle Lee. So great to see you. Thanks for joining us, especially those who might be watching us on 5 Plus. I'm thinking Cocoa Puffs right now. Cocoa Puffs? Oh, because mm -hmm. of the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Jimmy, where did that come from? I'm okay. thinking of <laughs> You gotta think lyrics. Hello. I was, I mean, it's six o'clock. I'm thinking breakfast. I'm thinking Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> And you have a kid, so that makes yeah, sense. That yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Shall we do some weather? Why yeah. not? Take it away. Yeah. We're going to get over here to the weather center. You go eat your Cocoa Puffs. Uh, this morning, we are waking up with chilly numbers just like yesterday. So if you step out the door, you're going to notice that chill to the air. It's 31 at Lambert. Wind chills in the low 20s just like yesterday. 29 in Warrington, 30 in Chesterfield, and 31 in Alton. But some of us have a breeze, and you see that has knocked those numbers down into the low 20s, like in Chesterfield, one of our colder spots, 21, the wind chill. So a warmer afternoon is on the way. We'll have more sunshine today as well. Temperatures climb into the 40s later on in the metro area. We will talk about a warmer day tomorrow and then rain for Thursday coming up. All right, let's head over to Paul Cook. If you didn't watch yesterday, Paul made his debut as our new traffic anchor. Paul, you're back for day two. I guess we didn't scare you away. Not at all. Not yet, Anthony. Yeah, okay. You just never know, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm watching you, man. I am watching you. Look at all of the green. Again, that's normal speeds, as you've probably gathered. Turning on through here, 270, 44. Folks coming into downtown, where we are going to have a little bit of construction. Uh, that doesn't start till 7 a.m., though, so that's a great piece of news right there. And that's going to be on the Illinois side, uh, 5570 at 64 on the Poplar Street Bridge. But overall, moving very, very well, guys. The community is hurting, you know, law enforcement community is hurting. Um, th this happens way too often. Well, this morning, family, friends and a community remember the life of a loving father, husband and officer, Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith. He was killed in the line of duty Sunday night at a Casey's gas station in Herman. Tonight, his hometown of Rosebud will honor and remember Sergeant Griffith. In the meantime, another officer remains in an area hospital. Our Alex Fees is live for us this morning at Mercy Hospital in Creve Corps with an update on his condition and the suspect accused of shooting both of the officers. Alex? Rennie Michelle, Herman Police Officer Adam Sullentruff remains hospitalized here at Mercy Creve Corps this morning in critical condition. As you said, he and his partner, Detective Sergeant uh, Mason Griffith, were shot Sunday night while responding to a convenience store robbery. Sergeant Griffith died from his wounds. 35-year-old Kenneth Lee Simpson is accused of shooting both officers at the Casey's in Herman. Simpson surrendered later to police. That happened yesterday afternoon after an hours-long standoff at a home nearby, just down the street from that Casey's, in fact. Simpson is being held in Crawford County Jail this morning and awaiting formal charges. Meanwhile, the community of Rosebud, Missouri, nearby, is mourning the death of Mason Griffith. He grew up there and also served as the town's police chief. 
The community is holding a vigil for him tonight at 7 o'clock at the Red Barn. Now, Sergeant Griffith leaves behind a wife and two children. His funeral will take place this weekend, Sunday afternoon, in, in fact, at 2 o'clock at Owensville High School with visitation prior to that. Now, coming up in the 6.30 half hour, in our next half hour, we will hear from residents of Rose, Rosebud about what they have to say about the service of their police chief. Live this morning in Creve Corps, Alex Fees, five on your side. All right, thanks so much, Alex. Of course, you know, this morning, support for Sergeant Griffith and Officer Sullentrop are really spreading across the Show Me State. A lot of law enforcement agencies are praying for their fellow brothers in blue, along with local officials. And we'll just take a look at some of these here. I mean, if we just hit on like Maryland Heights, the men and women of the Maryland Heights Police Department wish to extend our deepest condolences to the family and friends. We just see a lot of people saying that we are here for our officers. So the Herman community immediately jumped into action with a prayer service of their own last night. So I think prayer is the first place we begin. I'm, I'm sure a lot of things will follow in the community to support these families and what they're going through. But today, this is where you begin. Well, that was held at St. George Catholic Church. A deacon there says the two officers served in extraordinary ways that go beyond the badge. This morning, the group that helps families of first responders is stepping in to help the families of both officers. Backstoppers will give $10,000 to the injured officer, uh, Sullentrup, and his family. Five on Your Side is going to stay on top of this story, of course. And once we learn more information about pending charges to the suspected gunman, we're going to pass them along to you on air and online at KSDK.com. This morning, we've learned the woman accused of firing multiple shots and barricading herself inside of a Baldwin home has died. Police say she died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. It all started around 1230 when Baldwin officers tried to pull over a woman. Police say she flashed a weapon at a county officer. Uh, and then drove to a home on Cascade Terrace and fired multiple shots at officers. A Baldwin police officer returned fire, but no one was hurt. After a nearly six hour standoff, an ambulance and police rushed to the house trying to save the woman's life. She later died on her way to the hospital. Well, 606 is the time, and this is a big legal week for St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner. In the coming days, we should have some answers to the questions surrounding her future as the city's top law enforcer. Our Sydney Stallworth is live for us in studio with what we can expect. Sydney? Well, Rennie, Michelle, two weeks ago, a St. Louis judge gave Kim Gardner 14 days to respond to allegations made by Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey that she mishandled cases. That deadline hits this week, with the coming days being key in determining Gardner's future as St. Louis's circuit attorney. Now, Gardner must file her plea and send a copy to Bailey's office. She can stay in office while this petition plays out in court, though. Meanwhile, Bailey is calling on St. Louis leaders for records related to Gardner. His office has subpoenaed St. Louis Mayor Tashar Jones requesting any communication concerning or with Gardner since she took office. St. Louis Comptroller Darlene Green was also subpoenaed. Those records were due to the Attorney General's office yesterday. Gardner's office has faced growing criticism since last month's crash in downtown St. Louis, where 17-year-old Janae Edmondson was critically injured by driver Daniel Riley, who violated his bond more than 50 times. This weekend, Gardner's supporters rallied downtown, accusing Missouri Republicans of a political power play to push a black woman out of elected office. A former candidate for circuit attorney says he believes the office's shortcomings are rooted in staffing issues. Stabbing her in the back because she represents the community. They're trying to take the power back in this city. Certainly some of the attacks against her are definitely racial. I, um, I vehemently dis disagree with those attacks. It is very short staffed. That's leading to issues with dropping cases um, and then refiling these cases. That's not fair to the victims. That's not fair to the defendants in these cases. By Thursday, Garner's office is required to provide evidence of budgets, sanctions against the office, and any records involving the Daniel Riley case. All this coming in the wake of the resignation of Kim Garner's chief trial assistant, Marvin Teer, last Thursday. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks so much, Sydney.
Just hours from now, a serial killer who recently confessed to killing four women will be sentenced again. This morning, Gary Muehlberg is expected to be sentenced in St. Louis County for the murders of two of the women. Last week, he pleaded guilty and was given life in prison for the 1991 murder of Sandy Little. In just a few hours from right now, St. Louis leaders will announce new opportunities to engage and invest in economic justice. Mayor Tashara Jones and Congresswoman Cori Bush will share some new initiatives designed to help people with lower income and women-owned businesses. We'll learn specific details about the plan at 10.30 this morning. All right, let's give you an update on our weather first forecast. We are keeping an eye on a system that's moving through California this morning, and we want to go right to our future cast and show you how this system is going to move our direction. So tomorrow it's still in the Rockies, so we'll have a dry day. Temperatures tomorrow will get it back into the upper 50s. On Thursday, we'll have a little bit of shower activity in the morning as a warm front lifts through, and then a warm, breezy day until more rain develops in the afternoon and evening. This one could bring about half an inch to an inch of rainfall, and then on the back end of the system on Friday morning, as the rain wraps up. Some of this could mix in with a few flakes. Not worried about snowfall accumulation at all. Just a colder end to the week. Temperatures on St. Patrick's Day falling from the 40s into the 30s by the afternoon.